This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations with visiting campaigning politicians and we're filming this uh, live in um, the media production studios at the University of Otago in front of a, a small audience who um, hopefully will participate in the conversation but also out in the Twitter sphere, there's people um, following things and they can use the hashtag OUVoteChat2011 to ask questions or give reactions to what's going on. And eventually this will be available online on YouTube and iTunes. Okay, so this is the final vote chat for the election campaign and um, we're gonna be covering a, a really interesting um, electoral contest. Um, in Titai Tonga, which is the, the Māori electorate for where we are in Dunedin. Um, we've got a, a big political fight going on where the incumbent, um, the Māori Party MP Rahu Katane, is fighting for her political life and she joins us today. Kia ora. Kia ora. So basically, um, it's, yeah, it's do or die and um, what's happening, how intense is it? It is very intense and I was just thinking this morning that it's a completely different campaign this time than it was from last time because last time the three main contenders were actually able to work together and, and you know we did a whole lot of campaigning together um, and we kept it um, to the issues, to the policies and we didn't get into personalities. This time around it's, it's become a little bit different. Uh, one of the candidates in particular is um, very much into the personality right. attack style and so you know it's, do, it's been a bit different. that's a reflection of the larger campaign that things are getting a bit more dirty uh, aggressive negative overall or, or do you think that's particular to Titai Tonga? I think it's when you look at what's been going on in the other Māori electorates yeah. it's, there's only two of them where that's happening okay. and Titai Tonga is one of those so I think it's more about the candidates and um, or a particular candidate in, in each case rather than about but is Māori it politics. Also because it's such a competitive election that you know, there's a sense that um, it is up for grabs that anything could happen? Uh, it, it could be, but again, I think it, it is more about one particular personality and, and that is their style the of... of uh, who, <laughs> whose style is different from yours? That you uh, it, it is uh, the candidate for the Labour Party. Oh, OK, and so he's a new candidate and, uh, wow, he's um, standing for the first time against you. So... Um, uh, and some people were picking that he's going to win, obviously. Um, would he be the best candidate to win if it wasn't you? I mean, let's just assume you're the best candidate. Who would you like to, <laughs> you know, if, if it wasn't for you, who do you think should win? If, if I him? wasn't standing, yeah. I, um, who would I want to win? It wouldn't be the Labour candidate. Really? I, don't, I do not think that Labour has the best policies for Māori. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, over the last 70 years, they've been promising a lot. They have never delivered for Māori. And in fact, in the last three years, the Māori Party has been able to deliver more than any other party ever has. So, you know, it's... <laughs> It, it really is a fact that the, um, the two large parties, I would um, not be uh, voting for either of those. I would actually be looking at the smaller parties. I think that their policies, our policies, are, are so much better than their ones and actually do focus on Māori, uh, which is where we really do need to be focusing because we do know that when we, um, when you do things for Māori, it benefits Māori, it does benefit the whole okay. nation. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I'm interested in discussing more about uh, the Māori Party's differences with Labour and National, but just going back to what, how you got involved, were you previously in one of these parties or how did you choose to be in the Māori Party? Oh, it was no choice once the Māori Party set yeah. up and had a look at their um, kaupapa, yeah. the, the philosophy. But were you like a disillusioned Labour Party member or anything? I actually joined the Labour Party when I was 14. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. and, and voted um, for Labour but not for very long because I do look at what their policies are. I yeah. do look at their um, history and what they've done for Māori and they had never done anything for Māori. So I moved on. So were you like kind of disillusioned from way back rather than just with the foreshore and seabed stuff? Yes, exactly. Disillusioned way back. The foreshore and seabed just it's really cemented it. Uh, but they have been doing this all through. 
Labor ha has been doing it. Um, National doesn't have a great track record either, of course. So mm. no, none of the, the two main parties are, are there for Māori. Yeah, I mean, the, the Māori electorate seats are fascinating. And um, I, I agree that for a long time there was just this total monopoly on them, which made them very uncompetitive and boring. So what about back in, what was it, 1993, that Tohinare sort of broke that stranglehold on them. So that was a good thing, do you think, back then? Uh, when we had all of the uh, New Zealand First MPs come into the Māori seat, that certainly yeah. was um, a wake-up call for people to see that, no, we don't always have to vote Labour. Yeah. And it was a wake-up call, I think, for Labour as well. They realised yeah. that they can no longer take the Māori vote for granted. Unfortunately, the very next election, everybody switched back to sure. Labour, um, and Labour didn't learn a long-term lesson. So they did, again, they carried on in the same old, same old, not helping Māori. Making the promises, but never carrying through on them. And so you get to the uh, closing the gaps policy, which was, yeah. you know, it was the start of a very good policy. Right. Um, and started it, um, got fingers pointed at them, lost their nerve and uh, finished it without it ever having the chance to do any good. Okay. So, so, yeah. so at what point did you start to get involved in politics then, on a parliamentary sort of... You know, at at level. the parliamentary level, uh, just in the last election. Yeah. Uh, up until then I'd been involved in iwi politics, I'd been an activist, um, and uh, you know, just it was a family tradition basically to be uh, involved in politics in some sort of way. But yes, this was the uh, uh, last election, was the first time I got involved right. in parliamentary politics. Okay, but so you went involved back at the foreshore and seabed sort of stage? Of oh, the, I certainly um, was of part of the hikoi. Yes, yeah. I was part of that hikoi. I mean, right. you look at most Māori around the yeah. country, and <laughs> we had some way, either we were on the hikoi itself or we were supporting the hikoi. Yeah. Okay, and so you've been in Parliament now for three years, and it's been a big three years for the Murray Party. And um, I mean, what regrets? Do you have any regrets about how things have gone, like in terms of going with National for a start? Um, because it's torn you apart. It's it's been a really, really learning process for yeah. us. And of course, after the election, when uh, National made its advances, and, and mm. we uh, had a chat, and then went out and spoke with the electorate. Uh, with each of our electorates, people were really um, concerned, but they were prepared to say, go for it. Yeah. We do need to be part of government in order to make any difference. And that attitude has actually continued over the last three years. You've got people that who always had voted Labour in the past, mm. who turned to the Māori Party, still had that feeling for the, Māori Part for the Labour Party. Mm. Um, so we're very wary about going in with National. Mm. Um, and those ones are still a bit weary about it, but there is a whole lot of people that have said, yes, you have achieved and we want to, you to continue to achieve and the only way you can achieve is actually to be there, part of government in some sort of way. But it must be hard making some compromises too. And, um, oh, it's always hard to compromise, and, and, uh, but you know, life basically is about compromise. Sure. I mean, I'd love to have a Peugeot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm never yeah. going to be able to afford to own, own one, so, <coughs> so you know, somehow I have to make sure that I'm living within my budget, and it's the same with politics. You have to learn to live with what you, you're given. Okay, but it strikes me that you possibly are the victim, if any, in the Māori Party of you know those compromises in the sense that um, you're the one that might lose this, your electorate, possibly. We don't know, we'll see. But yeah. um, you're more under threat than any of the other Māori MPs. And that's largely because of this, well, the compromises you've had to make, and no, I, um, I actually don't and the see that. And the split with the yeah. with Harawera. I, I don't see that. Actually, I, I think um, that commentators are saying that, mm. and so you get a few undecided voters that might be picking up on that attitude. So where does it start? Does it start with the voters? And I say no, it do actually doesn't. The commentators are saying that. Okay, so and, and and actually, rather than reflecting what's going on, they are actually. Um, changing the attitude of people. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting point. So you think there's too many people with an opinion at the sort of elite level who are the journalists, the, the political academics? Yeah. The, um, yeah. And, and, and so many of these commentators don't actually either live in Te Tai Tonga or have any connection with um, the constituents of Te Tai Tonga, so they're not talking to them. I am. I'm out there every day talking with my constituents. I'm there at the hui. I'm listening to what they have to say. They're talking to me and yeah. telling me. But with all due respect, you're obviously getting a 
a certain side of things as well that other people wouldn't get in the sense that people are more likely to say, yes, we're going to vote for the Murray Party when maybe they won't in the end. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, you could say that as, the hui that I'm going to are Māori Party hui and, and yeah. it's only Māori Party supporters there, but that's not actually the truth. It is um, people from all spectrum. And when I go door knocking, I'm knocking on every single um, door. So I, I'm not just going to party faithful, I'm talking so, to everybody. So you're still pretty confident of winning? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Um, my um, door knocking, my phone polling, showing me well ahead of any other oh, okay. candidates. But do you think it's even going to be close then? Or are you just going to have a landslide victory? Or do you, I'd, I'd love what's... it to be a landslide. I would really love it to be a landslide. So, but, um, you know, so that I can well, actually blow away all these so, commentators that yes. keep trying to... Well, that would um, be... Yeah. yeah, but um, no, I, I um, think that it's not going to be as close as it was last time, but I don't expect it to be a landslide either. Okay, so you think your majority will increase this yes. time? Yes, okay. I do. Um, but what about the split with Tone Harawera? Do you have any regrets about that? I mean, was that handled in the best way possible? Because it's, it's, it's come to a pretty sort of, in some ways, sad yeah. situation where yeah. you've got these kind of two Maori-ish parties that are competing against one another. It, it, it's never good when a family breaks up, and that's basically what we were. We, we were a whānau. We um, managed to, um, for the most part, yeah. um, deal with our differences, but um, I guess when there is irreconcilable differences, you have so to you look at whether... So you think it was irreconcilable? Irre well, irre when, when you yeah. have somebody that um, keeps saying they're going to do something and won't, doesn't follow through, mm. or, or that they're not going to do something and, and breaks their word, then you can't keep working in that sort of situation.